In this video, I want to talk about taking Shimadzu GCMS data files, importing them into AMDIS, and then taking your AMDIS spectra or any spectra within AMDIS and putting that into your NIST program. So right now, this PE31 data file, I can tell I have collution under this black peak at about 16.2 minutes um, because I've plotted the two fragments that I noticed within it, my 57 in blue and my 105 in brown. You can tell that my 105 fragment peaks a little bit early at about 16.2 minutes, whereas my 57 fragment peaks a couple scans later at about 16.21 minutes. Being that these two primary ions have different trajectories, I'm thinking of coelution. Another way to visualize this, if I select on the left-hand side of my peak in black, I can tell 105 is my primary ion there, but as I move to the right, 57 creeps in and then overtakes my 105 mass fragment um, later on in that same peak. So I want to save this file to be able to open it up in AMDIS. I'm going to go to Save Data File As, change the extension type to a CDF, Chromatography Data File, and then I'm going to throw that into my C drive under GCMS Solutions. This is personal preference, but I think it's easier to find this way. So CDF, let's go ahead and save. Save it. In AMDIS now, I can go to File, Open. I'm going to make sure I can show all data files at the very top, just so my um, CDF files will populate. Open up GCMS Solutions, look down here, and here's this PE31 file I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and run the deconvolution. So from our poster analysis, I know I'm going to find the coalition right about here in this peak. So once the deconvolution is done, I'm going to zoom in right here. And I want to be able to import this into NIST for further evaluation because I don't have an AMDIS evaluation, which would mean a T, uh, for this peak in general. So I'm going to double click on this peak. That's essentially placed a specific scan for what I'm looking at. And I'm going to import these mass fragments into NIST. To do that, I can right click my mass fragments, go down to NIST library, then add that scan to my NIST library. I'm going to right click that same pane again, go down to NIST library, and then go to NIST MS program. It'll take a few seconds, but this should open the NIST MS program, and I should see my mass fragments pop up. If your mass fragments do not pop up, you might try to hit this go button, and it'll just start the import at that point. So these are my same mass fragments. I have my 57 group and I have my 105 as well. In blue, I'm making an identification for hexocosane. Everything sort of appears, but it doesn't have my 105 in that or my 77 in that or my 163. I want to see only the additional red fragments. So I'm going to click on my subtraction. This is my only additional red fragments. I can right click on this pane and do a library search. And voila, in propyl benzamide, with a fairly low SI at about 600 over here. It's not ideal, but I can click my head to tail and I can see, okay, my 105, 105 matches, 163, 63 matches, 77, 77 matches. Um, I have a little bit too much 85 over here, but if I undo what I just did, go back one, that 83 may have just been in a larger proportion than expected in my previous data file. Um, it's a tough call for this chemical, but that's how you import things into AMDIST and then NIST and do your subtraction or, as I think I mentioned in class, the search residual function. I hope this helps. Thank you.